guys, I am coming at you looking like I have a mullet. This video is so highly requested and I'm finally doing it. A lot of people ask me to do a video on how I get my own extensions done. Because I've been very open that I wear a lot of hair, my hair is short as you can see and my extensions are usually pretty long. So I wanted to take you guys through the whole process of removing my extensions, how I take care of my hair in between, putting them back in. I've definitely done videos of getting my hair done, but it's usually focused on color. But I'm now going to be giving you guys the specifics of how much hair I use, what I use, how I get it done, and the whole process. I am currently in the middle of removing my extensions. I just took out all my tape-ins. They're right here. I just took those out with remover, so I didn't really film that because it's pretty basic. And now all I have left in is one weft. So I just have one row of wefts in, looking great. So I'm gonna show you guys how I remove those. I typically end up removing my own extensions just because life gets so busy and I usually get my hair done just like in between other things. Most hairdressers probably understand that. So I am removing my own hair tonight and then I'm gonna go home and wash my hair, do a treatment on it. I'll take you guys through that and then I'm gonna put it back in tomorrow. I'm gonna show you guys the whole process and you get to see exactly how I get my extensions done, what I use and so on and so forth. So to start this video off, definitely don't recommend taking your own extensions out at home if you're a client. Only licensed hairdressers should do that to themselves and I'm sure we all do. So like I said, I took the tape-ins out using the takedown, which is our tape-in remover. Now I'm gonna use this little guy. It's the removal plier that comes in our extension kits and I'm gonna remove my weft. So I have a cozy weft in right now. So this is my cozy and I've had these extensions in almost eight weeks, so I am ready. It's actually growing out pretty nicely, but all my tapes were so loose. My weft is coming loose, so it's time. So. Basically, I'm just gonna take this removal tool and you put the top and the bottom into a bead and then it clamps the bead open and releases it and then I can start removing the weft as a whole. So I am just feeling for each bead, inserting the tool, loosening the bead and then I'm just kind of removing as I go. So you can see that that bead was loosened and now I'm just starting to kind of take the hair out and it's slowly coming out. And I'm so sad, you guys, because I was in dire need of a move up. Like I said, it's been eight weeks and we have a Utah class coming up this weekend and we're having it filmed. I have a shadower on Friday. I'm training someone on Saturday. So we've got a big weekend and I knew I needed my hair moved up before all of that because we're also getting the class filmed and we're taking like headshots and stuff. So I need my hair to look good. And I'm so sad because the Stu and the Alexa are two newest shades coming. We're supposed to come in this week and I think now they're coming in next week. And so I was kind of like holding out on getting a move up because I wanted to wear both of our new colors um, to help promote them. And so I was just like, okay, I'll just wait to get a move up until they come in. But now it sounds like they're gonna come in after the class. And so I'm like, dang it. So I'm actually just going to do a move up now because I desperately need it and then I'll put those new colors in next time I get my hair done. That side's loosened. I'm now gonna go through on this side and do it. And if you're a client at home watching this, um, removing your own tape-ins, like I said, I always recommend being a licensed hairdresser or letting your hairstylist do it, but tape-ins are a little easier to remove if you have the proper things to remove them. But taking out your wax is a whole different story. During COVID, I did do a video on my Instagram on like how to remove your own extensions at home, obviously because salons were closed. So obviously there are situations in where like you may need to do it, but if you can hold out, I would definitely say do so because I have seen so many clients come back in with like little pieces that, you know, their husband tried to cut out their weft and they cut their own hair or they did it themselves and they couldn't see what they were doing and they damaged their hair. So I would just always recommend having someone else do it for you, especially a licensed professional, because part of learning extensions is learning how to properly remove them. And if you haven't been trained in that, you can cause damage. So I just always like to use that as a little PSA because even though I'm doing my own, it's because I know how to do it. And I would hate for clients to do this thinking it was easy and then um, kind of get stuck in a bad spot. And you can see even as I'm doing this, like it's not perfect. I'm getting stuck in spots and I have to be a little more gentle because obviously I can't see the back of my head, so it's even hard for me to do it. So just a little warning out there to all you clients. I think all of the beads are loosened and I'm just kind of like slowly pulling my hair out of each bead individually so that I'm not just like ripping this weft out as a whole. All right, I just got one bead left. Mm -hmm. 
My cozy weft is out. I have an entire bag of cozies on this one row. Isn't that crazy? So now my weft and my tapes are out and I am, oh, one little tape, one spare guy. And it's actually like halfway out. So I think I can actually just get it out because I had already saturated it with remover. And voila, okay, so now I'm officially bald and have a mullet. So you guys can see my natural hair is pretty short. I've been trying to keep chemicals off of it to help it get healthier. And then I did go short a while ago and like kind of embrace my short hair. So I actually cut my own hair a little bit because of that. So it's growing, it's getting there. I still have a little bit of a shelf, but that is why I wear extensions. All right, guys, this is my hair all out. I got my weft and my tapes. Any guesses on how much hair I wear in my head before I actually tell you guys? I'm going to purple shampoo and wash the hair that was in my head to reuse, but I feel like I might want to add one bag of like a brighter color. We're kind of running low on a lot, so I might not, but I just wanted to come out to kind of see what our inventory is looking like. I always pull from the salon out here because this inventory is for people who come and buy hair, whereas in the back in the warehouse, that inventory is for online orders. I never pull from there just in case, but I want Freddie and it looks like we're out, so I'm gonna go look in the back. Okay, we have a little more back here. We actually just reorganized the warehouse. So we have like cozy webs, we have clip-ins, teep-ins, and then we knocked down the education wall. This used to be our education center and now it's just more storage. So we have machine webs, hand tied webs, all of that. It just keeps growing. Ka-ching, we have Freddy back here. So I may take one of these to add in because I freaking love Freddy and I feel like it matches my hair perfect right now. It really isn't. It's so much different when you can like break it apart and see the light shining through it. All right, I'm gonna do a Freddy. This is what Freddy looks like. It's like a rooted dimensional blonde. It's so pretty. It has so much dimension in it. It's just like a soft root. Love it. Okay, so I'm about to wash my hair at home. I am going to be using Kevin Murphy and I'm using the Young Again Wash and Rinse, the Unite Blonde Shampoo, and then I'm gonna use this Saints and Sinners hair mask. So I'm gonna wash my hair, I'm gonna tone my hair, and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a treatment. And those of you that have extensions know how nice it is to wash your hair with no extensions in. I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna actually start prepping my hair. I'm going to take all of the tape off of these tape-ins and then I'm going to purple shampoo and tone everything and then I'll put the new tape on once they're dry. So I'm sitting on my bed and doing it while watching Netflix and I feel like every hairdresser can probably relate to this on some level. Okay, all the tapes are cleaned off, thread is cut out, ready to tone. So I'm just gonna let it air dry overnight and then we will put it back in tomorrow. Okay guys, time to get this sewn in. So I'm making my assistant Kaylee do this. She took our training in June of last year and- Well, I have a knot in it, so. Yeah, she's like, this is great timing. <laughs> Thank I'm just you. throwing her into this. I'm making her stack four cozies on one row. So the first step is sewing in my row and I have four cozies and it's a half bag of Sky and a half bag of Jagger. So that is one full bag on one row and the cozies lay pretty flat if done correctly. So that is totally fine to put on one row. And then I'm just gonna do tapes all around it. So that is currently what we're doing is stitching in our cozy and then we're gonna do the tapes. Okay, you guys, you saw me getting my weft in, and then I had Kaylee, my assistant, finish the back of my head with the tapes, and then last night, I just put the rest of my tapes in, like the front of my hair, while we were watching a movie. So, 
I didn't record that because I completely forgot, but it was just me putting tapes in, which is pretty simple. But yes, it took me a full basically 24 hours to like actually get my hair done. And I feel like most hairdressers understand that because it's usually us like last minute getting our hair done. And that's just how it goes. I am now at the salon. It's the next day and I am just styling my hair. So I am just curling it with the J-Wave. It's our one and a fourth inch iron. I wanted to go over how much hair I have in my head. People always ask me when I get my hair done, how much hair I have in my head because I have a lot and I always am like scared to talk about how much I have because I don't want anyone to think it's normal. But I did this video so that you guys can actually see what I have in my hair, how much I use and finally like reveal the truth. So basically I have a lot of hair. It's super dense. Anyone who highlights my hair tells me that like it doesn't look like I'd have a lot of hair, but once you get in there, it's like crazy. So I wouldn't say it's like thick texture, but it's so dense, I have a lot of it. And I think Stu and I mom can both agree with that. Yeah. We fight over who has to do it. <laughs> no one wants Nobody to do my hair. Nobody wants to do it. And honestly, like with all the hair I have in my head, I could still fit more. But also I'm just crazy and I feel like I have to have that much. I probably don't need that much, but like, I've just been doing it for so long that it feels normal. So that's part of it. And then another thing is you guys know that I'm like in the process of healing my hair. So my own <laughs> hair, what? <laughs> I haven't bleached it in like two months. <laughs> that's a great word, healing my hair. Healing, because I do have a, <laughs> I do have a problem with like wanting to change my hair all the time. So I go lighter and darker. And I know that that is not the best thing for my hair and I have caused my own damage. I'm well aware, but because of that, my pieces in the front are shorter, so I have to like put tape-ins in the front to kind of fill those gaps in. So that's why I have so much. Like you guys can see, I literally have tapes like really close because I want that look of fullness in the front. That's why I actually have so much. If my front pieces were a little longer, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I'm hoping one day I will not have to do that. Here is the real deal. This is what I have in my hair. Are you telling the truth? Yes. It makes me sad. Makes you sad? Yeah. People, this is not normal. This is not normal. So I have one cozy weft in, a half of Jagger, a half of Sky, which equals one full cozy. And there are 120 grams in a full cozy weft. I have five bags of tape-ins. I counted as I put them in. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's more, who knows? Each of those are 50 grams. So if you add up 50 times five, what is that, Stu? Uh -huh. 250? 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. 250. Good job, Stu. Math is not his strong point. 120 plus 250 is 370. Yeah, most of the time I have even more. So I have a full bag of wefts and then five bags of tape in. So that is 370 grams of hair. And to put that into perspective for you guys, we usually tell people that they only need either one bag of wefts and one bag of tapes or like one and a half bags of wefts um, or like two or three bags of tapes. So I am very excessive and I am aware of it. That is actually what I have in my hair. So the placement is just like one horseshoe of the cozy wefts and then literally there is no rhyme or reason for the tapes. I just start putting them in where I need them, where I have to fill in gaps and stuff like that. So when I'm doing tapins on a client, there is like an actual pattern, but with my own, it's really just like where I need them. So that is the real life truth about my hair extensions. You how long I actually, what? You can never lie about it. I can never lie again. But I actually hate answering that question so much because I feel like then people think they need that much hair and it's just not the truth. So most people are not psycho like me. <laughs> right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on my hair extension process and the truth about how much hair I wear. I know it's crazy. Let me know if you would like more videos like this in the future. I always tend to film when I get my hair done, whether it's color or extension. So if you guys like seeing that, let me know. Also let me know what other types of videos or tutorials you would like to see. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.